Welcome back, y'all. My name is Ant Hart, and today is day 142 of 365 of studying and reading the Bible. And today we're reading from 1 Chronicles chapters 21 through 23, but you already know what to do. Go ahead and hit the like button so that the word of God can spread to more people. And before we get started, let us pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, God, thank you for all of the new mercies that you have granted us today, God. Lord, we just ask for your forgiveness for the sins that we committed knowingly and unknowingly. Lord, we also want to just ask for forgiveness for those who have sinned against us. God, thank you so much for what you're doing in our lives. And I ask that you just continuously to guide us on a path of righteousness. Lord, I ask that you heal those who need their healing, protect those who need protection, and you continuously guide us where you have us to go, God, especially for those who need direction. And I feel like me personally, I definitely need your direction, God. You are the shepherd and I am the sheep willing to follow you. And Lord, I thank you for making the word become flesh and sending down your only begotten son to die for our sins so that we may have everlasting life with you. This and many more blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. In chapter 21, David wanted to do a consensus of Israel despite Joab opposing it, which led to God's judgment in a three-day plague that killed 70,000 men. Now Satan stood up against Israel and moved David to number Israel. So David said to Joab and to the leaders of the people, Go, number Israel from Beersheba to Dan, and bring the number of them to me that I may know it. And Joab answered, May the Lord make his people a hundred times more than they are. But my lord the king, are they not all my lord's servants? Why then does my lord require this thing? Why should he be a cause of guilt in Israel? Nevertheless, the king's word prevailed against Joab. Therefore Joab departed and went throughout all Israel and came to Jerusalem. Then Joab gave the sum of the number of the people to David. All Israel had one million one hundred thousand men who drew the sword, and Judah had four hundred and seventy thousand men who drew the sword. But he did not count Levi and Benjamin among them, for the king's word was abominable to Joab. And God was displeased with this thing. Therefore he struck Israel. So David said to God, I have sinned greatly because I have done this thing. But now I pray, take away the iniquity of your servant, for I have done very foolishly. Then the Lord spoke to Gad, David's seer. Go and tell David, saying, Thus says the Lord, I offer you three things. Choose one of them for yourself, that I may do it to you. So Gad came to David. Thus says the Lord, Choose for yourself either three years of famine or three months to be defeated by your foes with the sword of your enemies overtaking you, or else for three days the sword of the Lord, the plague in the land, with the angel of the Lord destroying throughout all the territory of Israel. Now consider, what answer should I take back to him who sent me? I am in great distress. Please let me fall into the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are very great. But do not let me fall into the hand of man. So the Lord sent a plague upon Israel, and 70,000 men of Israel fell. And God sent an angel to Jerusalem to destroy it. As he was destroying, the Lord looked and relented of the disaster and said to the angel who was destroying, It is enough. Now restrain your hand. And the angel of the Lord stood by the threshing floor of Ornan, the Jebusite. Then 
David lifted his eyes and saw the angel of the Lord standing between earth and heaven, having in his hand a drawn sword stretched out over Jerusalem. So David and the elders, clothed in sackcloth, fell on their faces. And David said to God, Was it not I who commanded the people to be numbered? I am the one who has sinned and done evil indeed, but these sheep, what have they done? Let your hand, I pray, O Lord my God, be against me and my father's house, but not against your people, that they should be plagued. Therefore the angel of the Lord commanded Gad to say to David that David should go and erect an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. So David went up at the word of Gad, which he had spoken in the name of the Lord. Now Ornan turned and saw the angel, and his four sons who were with him hid themselves, but Ornan continued threshing wheat. So David came to Ornan, and Ornan looked and saw David. And he went out from the threshing floor and bowed before David with his face to the ground. Then David said to Ornan, Grant me the place of this threshing floor, that I may build an altar on it to the Lord. You shall grant it to me at the full price, that the plague may be withdrawn from the people. Take it to yourself, and let my lord the king do what is good in his eyes. Look, I also give you the oxen for burnt offerings, the threshing implements for wood, and the wheat for the grain offering. I give it all. No, but I will surely buy it for the full price, for I will not take what is yours for the Lord, nor offer burnt offerings with that which cost me nothing. So David gave Ornan six hundred shekels of gold, by weight for the place. And David built there an altar to the Lord, and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings, and called on the Lord. And he answered him from heaven by fire on the altar of burnt offering. So the Lord commanded the angel, and he returned his sword to its sheath. At that time, when David saw that the Lord had answered him on the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite, he sacrificed there. For the tabernacle of the Lord and the altar of the burnt offering which Moses had made in the wilderness were at that time at the high place in Gibeon. But David could not go before it to inquire of God, for he was afraid of the sword of the angel of the Lord. Chapter 22 details David's preparations for the construction of the temple, including gathering of materials, making plans, and instructing his son Solomon on the project. Then David said, This is the house of the Lord God, and this is the altar of burnt offering for Israel. So David commanded to gather the aliens who were in the land of Israel, and he appointed masons to cut hewn stones to build the house of God. And David prepared iron in abundance for the nails of the doors of the gates and for the joints, and bronze in abundance beyond measure, and cedar trees in abundance, for the Sidonians and those from Tyre brought much cedar wood to David. Now David said, Solomon, my son, is young and inexperienced, and the house to be built for the Lord must be exceedingly magnificent, famous and glorious throughout all countries. I will now make preparation for it. So David made abundant preparations before his death. Then he called for his son Solomon and charged him to build a house for the Lord God of Israel. My son, as for me, it was in my mind to build a house to the name of the Lord my God. But the word of the Lord came to me, saying, You have shed much blood, and have made great wars. 
You shall not build a house for my name, because you have shed much blood on the earth in my sight. Behold, a son shall be born to you, who shall be a man of rest, and I will give him rest from all his enemies all around. His name shall be Solomon, for I will give peace and quietness to Israel in his days. He shall build a house for my name, and he shall be my son, and I will be his father, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. Now, my son, may the Lord be with you, and may you prosper and build the house of the Lord your God as he has said to you. Only may the Lord give you wisdom and understanding and give you charge concerning Israel that you may keep the law of the Lord your God. Then you will prosper if you take care to fulfill the statutes and judgments with which the Lord charged Moses concerning Israel. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be dismayed. Indeed, I have taken much trouble to prepare for the house of the Lord one hundred thousand talents of gold and one million talents of silver and bronze and iron beyond measure, for it is so abundant. I have prepared timber and stone also, and you may add to them. Moreover, there are workmen with you in abundance, woodsmen and stone cutters, and all types of skillful men for every kind of work, of gold and silver and bronze and iron, there is no limit. Arise and begin working, and the Lord be with you. David also commanded all the leaders of Israel to help Solomon his son. Is not the Lord your God with you? And has he not given you rest on every side? For he has given the inhabitants of the land into my hand, and the land is subdued before the Lord and before his people. Now, set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God. Therefore, arise and build the sanctuary of the Lord God to bring the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and the holy articles of God into the house that is to be built for the name of the Lord. In chapter 23, we see the organization of the Levites in the various divisions for temple service, including their responsibilities and duties in maintaining worship and order in the house of the Lord. So when David was old and full of days, he made his son Solomon king over Israel. And he gathered together all the leaders of Israel with the priests and the Levites. Now the Levites were numbered from the age of 30 years and above, and the number of individual males was 38,000. Of these, 24,000 were to look after the work of the house of the Lord. 6,000 were officers and judges, 4,000 were gatekeepers, and 4,000 praised the Lord with musical instruments, which I made, said David, for giving praise. Also David separated them into divisions among the sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, and Mirerai. Of the Gershonites, Laodon and Shimei. The sons of Laodon, the first, Jehiel, then Zetham and Joel, three in all. The sons of Shimei, Shilomith, Haziel, and Haran, three in all. These were the heads of the fathers' houses of Laodon, and the sons of Shimei, Jehath, Zena, Jeush, and Beriah. These were the four sons of Shimei. Jehath was the first, and Ziza the second. 
but Jeush and Beriah did not have many sons. Therefore they were assigned as one father's house. The sons of Kohath, Amram, Izha, Hebron, and Aziel, four in all. The sons of Amram, Aaron, and Moses. And Aaron was set apart, he and his sons forever, that he should sanctify the most holy things, to burn incense before the Lord, to minister to him, and to give the blessing in his name forever. Now the sons of Moses, the man of God, were reckoned to the tribe of Levi. The sons of Moses were Gershon and Eliezer. Of the sons of Gershon, Shibuel was the first. Of the descendants of Eliezer, Rehabiah was the first. And Eliezer had no other sons. But the sons of Rehabiah were very many. Of the sons of Izhar, Shalomith was the first. Of the sons of Hebron, Jeriah was the first, Amariah the second, Jehaziel the third, and Jechamian the fourth. Of the sons of Uzziel, Micah was the first, and Jeshiah the second. The sons of Mirari were Malai and Mushai. The sons of Malai were Eliezer and Kish. And Eliezer died, and had no sons, but only daughters. And their brethren, the sons of Kish, took them as wives. The sons of Mushai were Malai, Eda, and Jerimath, three in all. These were the sons of Levi by their fathers' houses, the heads of the fathers' houses as they were counted individually by the number of their names, who did the work for the service of the house of the Lord from the age of twenty years and above. For David said, The Lord God of Israel has given rest to his people, that they may dwell in Jerusalem forever. And also to the Levites. They shall no longer carry the tabernacle or any of the articles for its service. For by the last words of David, the Levites were numbered from twenty years old and above, because their duty was to help the sons of Aaron in the service of the house of the Lord in the courts and in the chambers, in the purifying of all holy things and the work of the service of the house of God, both with the showbread and the fine flour for the grain offering, with the unleavened cakes and what is baked in the pan, with what is mixed and with all kinds of measures and sizes, to stand every morning to thank and praise the Lord, and likewise at evening and at every presentation of a burnt offering to the Lord on the Sabbaths, and on the new moons, and on the set feasts, by number, according to the ordinance governing them, regularly before the Lord, and that they should attend to the needs of the tabernacle of meeting, the needs of the holy place, and the needs of the sons of Aaron their brethren, in the work of the house of the Lord. But that's all for day 142. But some things that did stand out to me during this reading is first starting in chapter 21, where we see that David act foolishly. And then verses 9 through 13, essentially, God gave David three options to choose from for his own discipline and how God was going to discipline him from acting foolishly and kind of going against having faith in God. And I think that was very interesting. And I think it was even a humble stance of him saying, I would rather God's hand, you know, for God can be merciful versus falling at the hand of his enemies. And so that was interesting. And I think that was definitely the right option because we do see later that the Lord saw the things that were happening. And he basically told the angel to remove his sword from Israel. Um, and then moving further along, that was one part that definitely stood out to me. Then I thought the fact that even throughout that, God still was with David in the fact that he still preserved him. So he didn't die because of his own foolishness. 70,000 other men did, but he didn't. Letting us know too, that sometimes there are, sometimes the things that you do don't even directly affect you, but it affects others around you. 
which is why your obedience is so necessary. Sometimes your obedience, good or bad, right? Either your obedience or disobedience has an effect on those around you. So sometimes God isn't even telling you to do what you're doing for you. It's the it's because it's going to help others around you be blessed. Sometimes the blessing isn't coming to you. Sometimes the best thing is coming through you. So it's important to be mindful of that. And then um, also in 20 verse 22, I'm um, not chapter 22. Sorry. The fact that David then became so um, so focused and he cared so much about building the house of the Lord, right? I feel like beforehand, and obviously I'm assuming this, right? I'm putting my own assumption on it, but I feel like David just felt like that was something that he needed to do, which was to build the house of the Lord. Um, but now we see that he, he really is passionate about this, that he set up everything knowing that Solomon was going to build it, knowing that he wasn't even going to be a builder of the house of the Lord, that he wanted to make sure everything was prepared so that when he gave the project, when he told and gave the instruction to Solomon, even though it wasn't him, he wanted to make sure that it was done in this particular way that was going to glorify God in the best of all ways. And I think it was important because there was one part of it um, in verse five of chapter 22. And then David said, um, now David says, Solomon, my son, is young and inexperienced, and the house to be built for the Lord must exceedingly, must be exceedingly and magnificent, famous and glorious throughout all countries. I know I I will now make preparation for it. So he would it was it's a large task, but David cares so much. And I think this is where we kind of see David having a heart for God. Um and that was just one of the, those are the, some of the things that really stood out to me. It made me, um, I, I read this before, so it's kind of like a review, if you will, but it kind of opened my heart more to see like how much passion and things that we need to have for God, knowing that it's not even having the right heart posture. I think is the best way to say this, have a, a, a heart posture that is aligned with God, knowing that I'm doing these things. For example, this Bible study has nothing to do with my glory, but everything to do with God's. And so I should show up and I should make this as best as possible so that you may see it and you may glorify God through it. You know what I mean? It being that intentional. I feel like that's a great way to see how David is about building this house of the Lord, that it is very intentional. The preparations, everything, the gatherings of everything, him having everything down to the to the T of what needs to transpire when Solomon is building it and then the mighty men who are going to help Solomon build it. The preparation for the opportunity to build the house of the Lord is so key. Um, and I think the same thing that we need to apply to our lives, that whatever we're doing with the things that God has called us to do, be so very intentional because it's not for man. Although man can benefit from it, but it's because it, it's knowing that God gave you the task for a reason. You might not know the reason. Sometimes I don't even know why I feel like I was called to do this Bible study. So I feel like there's so many other things that I know I personally want to do that I feel like could make me more famous or make or, or even get more views, likes and all that other stuff that um, that becomes vanity and really means nothing in the, in the grand scheme of things. But once I get on camera and I feel like I, and I just feel like the Holy Spirit's presence starts coming over me and I just start speaking to y'all, not for the Bible study, but just out of my heart. I realize that it's so much more, it's so much more meaningful. This doesn't have anything to do with me. I'm just being used as a vessel. The same way that David, I feel like realized as he was preparing everything that this house was gonna be built regardless. It didn't matter if it was I who did it or if it was my son. I just need to make sure that as long as I'm alive, that I do all that I can with all that God has given me. And so I hopefully you guys take that as well, um, or that you guys could even discern that for yourselves. But that's all for today. I really do appreciate y'all. I love y'all. And if this was a blessing to you, go ahead and share this with somebody else so it can be a blessing to them too. And if you're ready for the next reading, I'll meet you there.